So, looking at our own personal health and well-being, I think it's obvious that we have to uh, be proactive and make an effort to uh, diagnose and look at uh, look at our own bodies and how we're feeling. And uh, I know that that's not always been popular culture. We have to uh, go to the doctor and get diagnosed and checked and all that sort of thing. And I'm not poo-pooing that. For serious things, you have to. However, for every little new ache or pain, especially as our body ages, sometimes we have to sit back, in my humble opinion, and start to look at uh, what can I do to self-diagnose or whatever. I've got this weird headache that I don't have normally and what could that be? And your mind wants to take you to the worst case scenarios, everything, something happens. And uh, even though we say, oh, that's foolish, we shove it way down here, it's still there. And so I think it's important that we uh, come to terms and just deal head on with, uh, with ourselves and, and what's going to happen. So I'm gonna share four self-diagnostic uh, or, or self things that we can look at that, uh, that might uh, help us be more well than what we are. And it's not always that we're sick with some down and out bug or disease or whatever it might be. A lot of times we're just feeling below that wellness line and it's, uh, it's a hard one to, uh, to understand, but uh, there's simple little things I believe that you can do. So here's four of them that I'm going to, uh, to share. Number one, hydration. And I know drinking enough water, we hear it all the time. And uh, even, uh, you know, for me, I, I sometimes, I know I'm not getting enough water for how much exercise I do or how much out in the sun or whatever, haven't adjusted that. But uh, quite simply, are you getting your four, I should say four, yeah, it's about eight cups of water normally, but if you're exercising and sweating, you have to add to that. But for me, the way to do it is my little jug of ice and uh, I put essential oils in, uh, you know, only the Young Living ones, of course, which uh, are approved as uh, food flavorings. And uh, so I use an orange, a lemon, uh, a grapefruit and a lime, actually, I mix throughout the day and try and always get my at least three of these into me. And I think there's about three cups in one of them, maybe, uh, and even three, try to get four. But uh Hydration, make sure you're getting enough water. A lot of times in the evening, um, a symptom of not getting enough water is the odd little headache that comes in. And usually, um, at least for me, it's because I didn't drink enough water if I get a little small headache and suck the water back and, uh, and you're good to go. So hydration is one. The second one, I guess, would be uh, your diet. And there's no getting around that what you put in, what you expel out, and how that whole process works, what's absorbed into your system, it's a huge deal. And, you know, one of my pet bugaboos, nothing against doctors, I love doctors, and they do amazing things, but golly gee, they never had to take a course in nutrition. Now, maybe that's false information or bad news or whatever you call that stuff, but I have heard that over and over that nutrition uh, is not a big thing in a doctor's study however pharmacology is and I'll just leave it at that and again I'm not poo-pooing but there's things that we can question and go is there a better approach I can take uh, when it comes to that kind of thing so with your diet there's so many things and it's so complex but break it down to something simple monitor your sugar grams and your protein grams and start there. You can go off into a lot of different permutation. Is it the right kind of complex carbohydrates and whatever, but just look at total sugars, total protein that you ingest in a day and make sure that's fairly even. Now the sugar is gonna be a little higher than the protein, but if you can keep that close to even, the number of grams, uh, that's gonna be a big start to uh, getting you nutritionally uh, into a good place. That's number two the nutrition and diet part of it. Number three, well, that's exercise. We all know that people that exercise more into their later lives tend to lead more vibrant lives and uh, less of it sitting and laying and a little bit more up and, and about. And our body reacts so well to physicality. We're built for it. 
And uh, when we don't use it, the body says, yeah, I'm not feeling so well. When we start to use and get those lungs moving, get the muscles going in the right way. And uh, you know what, there's all kinds of ways we can look at exercise. There's just walking, continuous motion, that's good. Uh, resistance training, do a little bit of the up and downs to help those muscles. There's a lot of things you can get into, but basically just try to get a little bit of movement. And it's not, working out is not painful. And if you make it painful, you won't do it. At least that's what I've found. Short bursts, just do a little bit and don't make it so that you won't want to come back and make yourself feel good again. And that's the exercise portion. Number four, I believe the most important one, and it all starts here, is your mental and emotional state. And we all have volatile emotional states and things going around and the lizard brain's working and you're getting paranoid over this, that, and the other thing and worry, worry, worry. I think all true health and wellness and well-being starts up here. And what can we do in that area of mental and emotional? Um, you know, stress is, I believe, the biggest killer, and a lot of people do believe that once your body starts getting into that stress mode, it's in fight defense mode, it goes into not a, the healthiest state in the world. It's more into sense of urgency, threats. I'm just going to button down and I get tighter and tighter, and you know, that's not going to work inside. So, stress relief. Um, you know, we use essential oils, we meditate, um, just take a short break in the run of the day. And, uh, you know, not that I'm advocating smoking or anything, but the smoke breaks did more than just put the smoke in you. It give you a little time out. Now nobody goes for breaks and they just work, 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 work you through. You got to give yourself a little bit of a break and a chance to sit back and uh, look at things from, uh, from up here as opposed to inside the lizard brain. And uh, there's a lot of things that we can do there. So there's your four. And uh, before you uh, diagnose yourself with some kind of a bad thing, why not look at these four things and say, am I doing all I can there? And uh, take it from there. Thank you. Have a great weekend and uh, enjoy. Get ready for the season.